Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at a Linux distribution that I tried looking at about three years ago, and it simply wouldn't work in my version of VirtualBox. And uh, I pretty much put it on the back burner for a while. A lot of people, though, over the years have asked my opinion on it, so I wanted to go ahead and give it another go. Of course, we're talking about Void Linux. So Void is its own made from scratch Linux distribution with some inspiration from DSD as well. And in this basis, it's really good in that it is lightweight, it is streamlined. They even have some ARM versions. So for me who uses a Raspberry Pi for my work, hey, there's a possible candidate here. If I like Void Linux in my virtual machine, maybe I'll look at running Void Linux on my Raspberry Pi, which is my actual workflow computer, which I just looked up and realized is still on. So <laughs> let me switch that off. Um, had power to it. It was actually shut down. Uh, anyway, um, it does have its own package manager, which is XBPS, which I can never remember what it is. And that's one of the biggest challenges is package management is not easy, especially since XBPS is very similar to Pac-Man. XBPS dash S, uh, XBPS dash install space dash S, uh, capital S space to install the package that you want. Uh, of course, the upgrade instead of um, SYU is SUV. And so you could, if you're regularly using Pac-Man, you could get it confused and be like, oh, go back and retype your commands a few times. But hey, at least they're making the effort of doing something different that's not based on something else. So those are the positives. The download is not a massive file. I know a lot of these are getting into the, the twos and the three gigabytes. Um, but the download itself, uh, I don't remember exactly how big it is. Let me see if it uh, triggers a download. So it's really 500 megabytes. That's the base. Uh, there is an XFCE as well, which is only 800 megabytes. So overall, if you're looking for a Linux distribution that is a very small file to download, it works really well for that basis, especially on a limited bandwidth. Uh, of course, I needed to download a bunch more to get it up to date once I downloaded it, which I think I just grabbed it the other day. Now they do have the 64-bit, um, they do have a 32-bit, they have ARM, uh, in the ARM they have Pi, Pi 2, Pi 3, and Pi 4, and they have some depreciated instructions for some older boards as well. So there are some options for, uh, for a lot of different people. Overall, the distribution itself, it's, it's easy to grab, and as long as you have a uh, system that will run it, you can go ahead and get it started up. Here's your downside of it is it is absolutely not user friendly. I found it actually frustrating to install and that's a problematic thing. There is no graphical installer. There is no button to click to boot up a terminal to install. You have to read the documentation and know that when you boot up the live image, you have to boot up a terminal and manually type in sudo void dash installer. That's going to start up a uh, command line based installer program. Now it's not going to be like Gentoo or like the original Arch. It's not going to take a long time. Those would take up to an hour or so, even running the Arch 5 scripts. Those would take a long time to install. This you can actually get it installed within, I'd say, about 20 minutes. But you have to walk through a command line stuff to give it the basic information. And the hardest thing for the new users is this does require you to manually partition your disks. They give you a couple different options for your partition manager and they give you a few little hints but if you do not know how to manually partition your disks then you're going to seriously struggle. Now in my case as I first installed this I actually had a lot of problems with it. My system was lagging out and I'm not sure if that was the build or if that was something in my computer or I actually suspect that my hard drive is possibly on the verge of failing as well so I'm working on making a mirror of that. That being said, um, maybe that was the issue, maybe it wasn't. I had a very frustrating time getting it installed when it came down to the partitions because I had to go in there, enter the keyboard command to you know create a new partition or set some option, and there's like a five to ten second lag. Again, this didn't always happen but it could be more related to the hard drive than anything else. But the fact I have to sit here in 2022 and manually partition my hard disk in a command line terminal application to install a Linux distribution tells me this is not going to be something that you run for anything more than an ego stroke. And to be perfectly candid, there's no reason why we need to be doing this. Now, the advantage, of course, is that 
yeah, maybe we should remember how to do things like manually partition uh, our disks. And so thank you for the reminder about how exactly to set those up. For you guys wanting to do this, let me just give you a brief reminder. You need three separate partitions. One of those is one can be a 100 megabyte fat partition uh, slash boot with a boot flag. One of those is going to be a basic mount partition with a slash, which uh, I did ext4. You do any other thing that's going to work with Linux. You're going to need another one, which is a swap partition, which is going to be about twice the RAM of the machine. So that is kind of your, your disk partitioning sequence. And then once you get those set up, then you have to assign them uh, with another command line tool into which is the boot, which is the mount, which is the swap. Not a difficult thing, but if you're new to Linux, it's not going to be something you're going to have a good experience with. Now, this gets me to my second major issue, which again, I, maybe it was an issue with my drive, maybe it was an issue with the day, maybe the repositories were down or something, but when I went ahead and installed it, I rebooted the system, I was not able to install any packages. Um, apparently, maybe, maybe the issue is you didn't install my slash SVU to update the whole system first, perhaps that was the issue. And so originally I said, well, this is a bunch of garbage because I can't even get in there and edit my packages, uh, the, the repositories, because they don't have nano on the thing. All they have as a text editor is Vi. I have not used Vi in a long time, and even then I only used it when I had to. I don't remember how to use Vi. It's like speaking a foreign language. So if you need to do anything manual in the terminal, you're going to rely on Vi. Again, why? Why on earth do you not install something like Nano that is actually easy and intuitive to use for a basic person that, okay, I'm going to do my first jump, I'm going to edit something in the terminal. Vi is my option. Excuse me, I'd like to go and off myself now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I had a lot of issues because I couldn't get in there and I didn't want to read through the documentation. I have a limited amount of time here. And that really brings me to the next point about it is nothing in the system is clear or intuitive. To run Void Linux, you're going to have to spend a lot of time reading page after page after page of documentation. And in all honesty, I think that the time of doing that in the Linux community is long past. We have plenty of distributions that you do not need to run through pages and pages of documentation to do basic tasks on the system. Now, once we get the system installed, it's running your basic XFCE. It works pretty well because XFCE works pretty well. There is no GUI package installer. There's a few out there that are unofficial that you can install, which are going to give you some head to install things. But for the most part, you're going to be doing everything in your terminal. If you like doing that, then it's going to be really good for you. If you would prefer some GUI management tools, well, you're probably not going to like it. Once you get it installed, I was able to install it the second time, which installed more flawlessly. I was able to get it updated. Maybe the issue I had is the repository mirrors were down at the very point in time I was trying to play with it. I don't know. Um, but once I was able to get it installed pretty quickly the second time, I was able to get some of the basic applications installed that I would usually use for work, like Bluefish, FileZilla, um, um, I didn't, uh, let's see, I didn't look for like KeyPass XC or anything like that. Uh, there's a lot of applications I might look for down the road later, but some of the basic ones, Bluefish Editor uh, that I use for editing pages, your web browsers, these were all there. So overall, the thing seems to work okay. Um, it just begs the question for me, am I interested in spending a lot of time on a distribution that I need to spend a lot of time with the documentation? A lot of things are not working for me out of the box. I had to install it a few times to get a system that was stable enough to use. And it all boils down that my answer is really no. So while a lot of people love Void Linux, I personally did not find it attractive. I just found it one of many other Linux distributions that runs a stock XFCE, which isn't my favorite desktop environment. Of course, you can install your own desktop environments from the repositories. You can manipulate the system yourself. It is lightweight, so that's a good thing. But the fact of the matter is... Um, for me, this isn't the right distribution. If you're looking for something easy to manage and user-friendly, it's probably not going to be the distribution for you. If you're looking to learn a lot more about under the hood of Linux, you're looking to 
uh, basically learn how these systems work, you're looking for a more um, command line tool system, then I think it's going to be a great distribution. As far as how it's going to manage um, other package formats, um, I, it does not have system D, so Snap's not going to work. Not sure about Flatpak. App images should work, but I didn't test any. So overall, Void Linux... I personally am going to avoid it, <laughs> but if you love it, yeah, that's fine. You, you go ahead and love it. I'm not hating it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's not for me for the reasons that I've listed here. Uh, it's, in fact, rare I would give a distribution two run-throughs, and um, this one I did give it two run-throughs, and actually cutting this the third time because I wanted to have a little bit more positive video than the first two I tried to originally record. So uh, anyway, if you love Void Linux, let me know legitimately why in the comments down below. Am I missing something? Is there some amazing thing about this that's like I just completely missed? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, if you're looking for a user-friendly Linux distribution, Void is not it. Uh, so I would avoid it if uh, that's your approach. If you're wanting to learn more and have a little bit more of a challenge, then yes. Uh, definitely have a look at it. Anyway, there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.